Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of the Shalkan of Fear Road to Glory. Today we are going to be taking a look at our 29 30 season, see how we did and let me tell you it's been the best season so far. Firstly of course we go to the new arrivals and as you can see there have been a few. The most important one is Juan Carlos Torres from 99 million, 22 apps, 3 goals, 8 assists, 7.5 rating, which is very nice. But also Podence scoring 12 in 22 games with a 7.2, also making sure that the price tag that we paid for him is worth it. Krupi for 18.2 million also did pretty well. And of course Toza Namora who had to do with a lot of substitute appearances. Got 6 goals, 10 assists and a 7.24. The other ones are not very noteworthy. Satsutalo played ok, Ellison was insane, Pacho played ok and Gatti uh, didn't actually play a lot so we are probably going to be looking to sell him again. Then of course our biggest John Wonder Kid signing, Morgan Bubauscher. He ended, uh, he played the season for Olympique Lyon so he didn't really play a lot of games for us. And of course transfers out, the big transfer that we already saw, 180 million for Chuku, which meant that we could buy two replacements for him and strengthen the team in more places than just one, which was great. And other than that, of course Kone left for 60 million, but we didn't have any other big sales. So let's go ahead and go to the season's results. As you can see, we have become the champions of the Bundesliga again. Um, 84 points, very very high, Uwe Drago as our top scorer and as you can see we had a really nice run here. We did tie some games uh, here and there against bigger clubs and we actually lost one against Stuttgart and Leipzig. Uh, but other than that we did pretty pretty well. Uh, Bayern almost caught us but in the end we ran away with it. And then let me tell you something else, the UEFA Champions League, we've also won it and look at this run. We had a really tough time against Bayern, winning 2-1 and then drawing to 2. Then away against Arsenal, we kept the 0 and the clean sheet, which was a very nice. And then we beat them at home with 3-1. And then in the final against Real Madrid, we were pretty lucky, I would say, because they got a red card in the 31st minute, which means that we just dominated and played out the game as we wanted. And that means that we are, are now second time in a row that we won the Champions League. And this is all based on data, so even you can do it if you just download the Excel in the link below and follow the video. It's just insane, absolutely insane. Anyway, the UEFA Super Cup, we did also win against Aston Villa 2-2 and then won on penalties. The Dave Bebokal, we sadly got knocked out by Red Bull Leipzig, which was very unfortunate. Uh, we couldn't really do anything about that, we just um, played a backup squad because I thought the Champions League was more important. And then we just did had absolute heartbreak at the end. They did deserve to win, to be honest, with their XG. But just a penalty on Penda. I think Pacho played pretty poorly in that game. Yeah, he did. So just, uh, just a little bit of a shame, but can't really do anything about that. And then the German Super Cup, of course. We also already won. So very, very happy with those uh, four trophies that we got this season. Then this doesn't really say a lot, but our biggest win 7-0, match to remember 7-1, and goal of the season apparently from Veloso. Now let's go to the finances, might not be interesting for all of you, but of course 14 more million in sponsorships, 3 more million in match day, 3 more million in competition prize money because we got just got as far as, as last season. We did get more broadcast revenue, that is because you get paid a certain amount of broadcast revenue if you're longer in the Champions League or if you have played there in the past couple of seasons. So the more seasons you play in it, the more money you get. And actually 66 million in merchandise sales, which is absolutely insane. It means that we are growing and growing and growing. Now let's check how we lined up and this is what I've been working against, a team that only has greens because as you can see everybody's rating is above the green mark. The only um, areas where I would like to improve maybe would be in the center of the defense or in the uh, as our ball, play, ball winning midfielders but we're gonna have to see. In the attack I am very happy with how everybody's scoring and I actually think it's weird that Dopanzo and Krupi are in here because we have Silva and Podence as well but um, yeah 
that's what the game chooses, I suppose. Then record breaker Frimpong got an absolute insane 28 assists, while Ellison got 25 clean sheets. One bad thing to notice here is Ellison is retiring. Um, at least I thought he was, but uh, I think he is. He is retiring, so we're going to have to search for another goalkeeper. He didn't want to go down to a lower... Um, Division he wanted to stay in the top divisions, but if he wanted to stay a, l a year longer I would probably have given him in the contract because he's been so insane for us But anyway, so we're gonna have to search for an another goalkeeper uh, The most player of the wards of course Jeremy Ping Pong uh, bought this guy for 80 million uh, 78 million and in two seasons he gave us 31 assists and nine goals in Bundes in the Bundesliga, which is absolutely insane. Look at these average ratings. One of the best wingbacks, definitely in the game. I, w I, I will say outright. Then, of course, we paid the highest transfer fee, 123 million, since we started the game. We have the fastest goal, apparently, and also the most fee received with 163, with 17 of that coming later. So, very happy with that. Then let's go at the manager timeline. Here you can see Bundesliga Triumph. And here we have 10 trophies. We have actually one now. Which is very, very nice to see. And I think with this team there's more to come. Because we are absolutely the best one. The best team in the world right now. Got 18.8 .8 more social media followers. The season ticket waiting list has grown even more. So I think we might consider... Buying or building a new, uh, a new stadium soon. I'm not sure if the board will agree with that, but we'll have to see. Now, right here, let's just accept this current vision, discuss the plans for next season. We always do, and I don't want to talk about anything. There is no one there anyway. So, doing uh, pretty well for ourselves here. Um, this is a loan update about my players, and I kind of want to see who won the DFB Bokal. And FC Köln actually beat Red Bull Leipzig. That's insane. So FC Köln actually got their first prize in. That's very nice for them. Um, the Dave Babacal. So happy that uh, Red Bull Leipzig didn't win it. But also a shame that uh, they didn't get away with any prizes. So the plans for next season are that I want to start to see if I can get some players in. Unfortunately, I only have 34 million to work with. So we're going to have to either get some sales in or I'm going to have to ask the board for more money. But I don't think we're going to get any big uh, big sales in or b big um, transfers in this season. Anyway, in the shortlist, there's still one player I would love to add to my team. Of course, Gianluca Casarini. Um, his Asking price is pretty high at this point, uh, 201 million. So I'm hoping that we can get him. Of course, Man City now also wants him, so it's going to be harder for us to actually get him in. Uh, but I do have some other players also on my short list who I want to buy. Uh, anyway, I will sim through the last, the the whole transfer window. Then I will come back to you when we have done all the transfers. And then I will think about if we're going to do another season or we're just going to leave it, leave it on this high where we win the Champions League, we win the Bundesliga and we actually have the biggest team and the best team in the world. Anyway, I will see you in a bit where we discuss what kind of transfers we made and what kind of transfers we did. And after that, we will decide if we want to go through with the series or if we want to end it right there. First and foremost, let's look how we did in those couple of games before the transfer window ended. As you can see, we are in third. We've won our all our games, but <clears throat> with small margins, a 2-0 victory, a 1-0, 2-0. So I may have to tweak something in the tactic so we can do a lot better. Then you can see here we have been drawn against City, Ajax, Ludogratz, Hertha, Lille, Milan, and Inter and also Olympia, I don't know where they're from, Slovenia, and Tottenham in the Champions League. So pretty tough ones, two English teams again. We're going to see if we can get through. Um, however, should be pretty doable, I would say. Should be able to go through in the best of eight. That would be nice because then we don't have to play another round. With that out of the way, let's continue to see what kind of transfers we made in this 2030-2031 season. 
We start off with a lot of players in, but let's first begin with the players out. Dopanzo has left for Chelsea, 121 million. A very good well-rounded player, but never really gotten into our first team, never really was a starter. He played games off and on, played pretty well. His best season was two seasons ago, bought him for 8 million, sold him for 109. So that's a great piece of business. Then Gio Gio was Calavini wanted to leave, so he left to Inter. We bought him, of course, from Atalanta for 81 million, sold him for 72. I had a youngster who was better than him, if not a little worse, that I wanted to buy. So Scalvini was on the list to go. Not too uh, sad to see him go because it also opened up more uh, room in the wage budget. Then Marco Caneshi, our backup goalkeeper, we sold him on for 59 million after buying him for 27. Very good goalkeeper, however, I do have a youngster now that uh, Allison has retired that is going to take over from him. So we don't really need him anymore and if I can get 60 million for a backup keeper, I will take it any day of the week. Then the next guy is Tom Roth. 66 million we could get from him and this guy is very well rounded and I didn't really want to let him leave but unfortunately we kind of had to because the offer was just way too good 48 million they're paying for him up front and 66 in installments so very happy with that after buying him for 12 million then Arda Guler we have bought him in on a free and now sold him for 40 million wasn't really going to play him and he is now at FC Porto Gatti uh, a backup backup guy, player that we brought in for 11.5, didn't really get to play a lot, wanted to leave, so sold him to Saudi Arabia for 11. And then a youngster uh, for 10 million who left, bought him in for 2.1, so just a little bit of profit. Same goes for Di Petrio and Dejan Lubicic, brought him in on a free, now sold him for 2.9, so a little bit of profit right there. And then something very important, Josef Sutalo, who we brought in on a free is going to Milan for I think 59 yeah 49.5 million he's being sold next uh, season so we're going to get a lot of money in from him which is very nice the other out uh, transfers here are just backup players and one important one Martin Bush this guy one more year out on loan and he's going to be a starter for us so next season we might see him in the squad the rest, I just sold a lot of players that didn't really get playing time. Our squad is very thin now, but we should be able to have enough to reach the end of the year without any trouble. And after that, of course, we are moving on to the transfers in. Because we had to let go of a lot of players, so we also brought in replacements. First things first, let's go to the least transfer fee paid Joaquim Rodriguez from SEP, just a perfectionist wonder kid, um, not really described as a wonder kid anymore. Let him go, go out on loan, this guy could just give us a nice little profit once he's reached his potential. Very well rounded, just a cheap deal, 2.2 million. Then 6 million for E1 Murray, also out on loan immediately. Um, not really expecting a lot of this guy, but 6 million for a Scottish winger is always good. We could sell him on for profit, I'm pretty sure, later on. And also Guillermo Augusto, a, a lot better guy. If you look at his stats, physically he still needs to improve a lot, mentally is insane. And technically he has everything that you need in that deep lying playing role. But we're trying to retrain him to be able to play as a shadow striker and hopefully he can be a very good backup for us this guy is actually listed as a wonder kit so very nice to see then Victor Vittorio Aimati also brought him in for a big transfer fee but loaned him out as you can see this guy has good physicals good mentals and good technicals but I just want him to improve a lot more he's not gonna get the playing time for us so loaned him out to Real Espanyol immediately so he could get some playing time right there and then, next on the list, Mats Nissen. You saw that we sold Tom Roth, so now we need to play Mats Nissen in the right back position. Um, he's a backup for us, 23 million for this guy, very cheap wages, 6, 70k for us. So, really looking forward to what he can do. He's already played a couple of games, not really made a good impression, but hopefully he will turn out to be quite okay if he reaches his potential. Then, you saw that Scalvini left, and his replacement is Andrea Rossi. Andrea Rossi is currently a bit worse than him, 
uh, if we look at mentally, physically and technically. But if this guy just improves a little bit, he'll be in at the end a lot better than Scovini because this guy has also 16 technique, which means that he can do a lot with the ball if he's not just defending. Really nice to have him in. He's our starting ball winning midfielder. And the next guy on this list is Joey Stevens. This guy has it all. Great physicals, great mentals, great technicals, everything you need in the advanced forward position. Maybe needs to improve his passing a little bit, but this 23 year old Englishman cost us 50, uh, 53 mil. After the Panzo left, I needed someone to replace him. I brought Joey Stevens, and Joey Stevens, according to my data, is like a lot better than the Panza. So, really happy to have him in. And then our biggest signing of them all from Chelsea, welcome Agustin Patlan. A uh, center back youngster, not really described as a wonder kid anymore. This guy can still improve a ton, and I'm hoping that he does. Mentally well rounded, you don't get them better than that. Physically insane, and technically okay. Just hoping that he will still improve a bit in his technical ability. But this guy is going to be a starter for us until I don't know, like 10 or 20 years. Very good guy, Mexican already capped 11 times. So those are all the signing signings that we brought in. You might be wondering how are we doing financially because when we started we had a big debt and as you can see 172 million in the bank a transfer budget of 148 million and we actually improved our squad this year very very insane if you go to scouting you can see that we have a wage budget left of 600k and as you can see if we go to the wages, you see we're currently spending 3.7, which meant that we have gone down since last season, which is very good to see. Also, if we go back to the finances and we go click on debt and loan, we're almost debt free, which means that we're doing insanely when it comes to our finances, which is great to see and also very nice that we can move on some players and also still make a profit while also being one of the best clubs in the world. This is how we will be lining up now. Dino Nisic, the guy that I told you about, the goalkeeper, is now our starting goalkeeper, 22 years old, bought him for 70 million from Dynamo Kiev a couple of years ago. He's the replacement for Ellison and this guy looks absolutely insane. Happy to have him, still going to scout for other good goalkeepers, but I think this guy is one of the best in the game right now. Then on right back we have Frimpong with on left back, of course, Torres, Juan Carlos Torres, look at this guy, this guy is insane on that left side. Then Da Rosa, a wonder kit that we brought in, I think a couple seasons ago for 40 million, is now our starting center back, together with Patlan, who we just bought in for an insane signing fee of 92 million. Then in the midfield, we have Rossi, of course, the Italian that we bought in as the replacement for Scalvini, and Veloso, who has been at us for I think four or five years now, after we bought him for 75 million. He is 78, sorry. He is still insane physically, mentally, and technically. So very nice to have them in. Then Zhao Neves, the same as Veloso, very well rounded, is still our shadow striker with Asan Uedrago in the inside forward position. And up top, we still have the partnership of Gabriel Silva and Mauricio Podens. So, a lot of Portuguese in this team. One, two, three, four starting Portuguese players, I do think. Um, and on the bench, we still have insane players as Pacho, who we brought in on a free. Tobias Wimmer, who came from our own youth. And he's been starting a lot of games l last season. So, really looking forward to what he can bring. Then on the bench we still have like a lot of good players like Luca Mortello, Tobias Wimmer, Joey Stevens right here, the new signing, and also Claudio Vescirelli, which is insane mentally and physically as well. Technically could be better, but that's all what we have right now. So as you can see, the squad is pretty thin. We don't really have a lot of uh, good backups, but I think after next season, we can sure invest some of that 184 million that we still have left to bring in some good rotational talent. With all of that being said, this will be the end of this Schalke Nofier Road to Glory series. Our journey started in the second Bundesliga and along the way to our second Champions League win, we have gathered multiple Bundesliga wins and other titles. 
I think it is fair to say that, with the help of data, we have helped Schalke 04 to become the European powerhouse that they once were. If you would like me to continue this series, please leave a like down below and let me know in the comments why you would like me to continue. There will be a lot more content coming your way. If you do not want to miss out on any of that content, subscribe down below to get notified whenever I upload. Anyway guys, that's all for now. Thank you for watching, I hope you have enjoyed and I do hope to see you in the next one.